when you look at some of these teams, they are games that they need to win if they hope to avoid relegation in uh, in the Nations League when the, with the likes of France and Switzerland and England uh, and uh, and Wales in those groups right there. Where do you want to start, Mossy? Uh, well, we're going to check in on the U.S.'s group stage opponents at the World Cup, and two of them are European, which means they're taking part in the Nations League. England and Wales are both last in their group, eliminated from semifinal contention, fighting just to avoid relegation. Uh, in Wales's case, it would be much less of an indignity to get relegated. So their manager, Rob Page, has made it clear he's not all that concerned about uh, Nations League standings and points. Uh, he's treating this window as a chance to get his team ready for the World Cup. We've all watched Gareth Bale struggle with LASC. We're curious to see how he looks with Wales. He is in the squad. Wales away to Belgium on Thursday. That's our FS1 game. And then they're home to Poland, the second game in this window. Um, how would it make you feel if Bale looked outstanding for <laughs> Wales after the way he's played for LAFC? I mean, we've we've said all along that he might be sandbagging uh, for LAFC. <laughs> and, and we've also said all along, if if he isn't sandbagging and he's, he, he's really bad, I kind of want him to be bad for for uh, for Wales. And and even then, I only want him to be bad for Wales when they're in that first game against the US. Everything else he can he can play as well as uh, well as possible. But, you know, getting back to the, you know, to the the approach that these teams that these teams are taking, you know, a a tournament if you will, a league that you will, a competition that was specifically made to foster competition with the groups and the different levels, and obviously the promotion relegation aspect of it, has now been torpedoed because of the World Cup coming in November and December, so much so that coaches are more than happy to explain that they're not going to risk anything that would put the most important thing that is coming this year for a national team, if you one of the 32 teams that qualify, which is ultimately uh, the World Cup. And so it's just, it's a strange, strange situation to be in. But I also think there is an element, whether it's Wales or anybody else, it goes back to what we said about the US, where you also can't afford to waste these two games to see what you want. Now, if you're Wales, you might say, look, we are what we are. We know what our 11 ultimately is going to be if everybody's healthy. So we don't necessarily need to have everybody else out there, especially risking injury. But I mean, every time that Gareth Bale steps on the field in training. Theoretically, he's risking injury. Somebody could kick him or he could, you know, trip over the sidewalk. So I don't necessarily think that this is otherwise you just bubble wrap him until November uh, and off you go, which, you know, who knows? Maybe Wales is thinking about doing that. Uh, England, meanwhile, uh, they face Italy at the San Siro and then Germany at Wembley. Uh, Harry Kane is creeping up on uh, Wayne Rooney's uh, England scoring record. He's three goals behind. I expect him to break that record on November 25th by gliding past Aaron Long and slotting it uh, past Matt Turner. Um, but um, a lot of question marks elsewhere. England have been pretty shocking in this Nations League so far. I'm wondering about the center back pairing, you know, what combination of Maguire, Eric Dyer's had a pretty good start to the season, John Stones, Tamari playing well with AC Milan, but all seems a bit unsettled back there. In the midfield, you have Jude Bellingham emerging, Declan Rice, but Still, I, I'm not sure exactly who's going to start there. So Gareth Southgate does have some things to sort out here. You know, I you know, oftentimes I say form is fallacy, but do you think that Maguire ultimately is going to be starting that first game uh, of the World Cup come uh, come November, December? As we know, England that first game will be facing Iran, the U.S. facing Wales. I don't think so. I think uh, his struggles and inactivity with Manchester United are finally going to compel Southgate to drop him and figure out a different pairing. Well, I mean, look, if if Gareth Southgate is using this um, also as an opportunity to get tune ups for the World Cup, I mean, these are two great games, by the way. And I know it's just the luck of the, the draw in terms of what Nations League is. And in that sense, they benefit because they could be playing other teams right now. But to play Italy away. And then Germ Germany's away too, right? Uh, uh, no, they're home to Germany. They're home to Germany. But either yeah. way, you're playing two of the two of the great teams. Obviously, a rematch uh, from Euros when it comes to uh, the game against Italy. So, as far as your final two games, I don't think that you could ask for anything more if you're Gareth Southgate. Uh, and finally, Iran will take on Uruguay and then Senegal next week. Uh, big story with Iran is that Carlos Queiroz is back. Uh, th this is wild to me because the previous coach, Stokic, 
qualified them for the World Cup and had a pretty good record. I'm, I'm still struggling to understand why he was let go. And they bring Carlos Caros back, who had a lengthy, successful spell with Iran, uh, coached him in the last two World Cups, but has been pretty terrible since then uh, with uh, Colombia and Egypt in this cycle. But he lands on his feet because after failing to qualify two other countries for the World Cup, he himself will be going to Qatar. Well, we all know that uh, the politics of soccer are ever present for all nations and at all times, right? And so the federation leadership, in this case, it would be the federation leadership in Iran, uh, always has a say. And, you know, with Kirosh's experience, but man, oh man, can you imagine if you qualify a team to a World Cup um, and you don't get that payoff? That is just, as a coach, that is just brutal. Not just, not just because you, it's something that you put on your resume. I'm not denying the value of that, but just to kind of finish it off. It's just, ah, I just, I can't, I can't imagine. Now there's some coaches just say, it's just too much trouble. I don't want to deal with it. That's a different thing, but to be replaced after you actually qualify. And it's not like this is Brazil or Argentina where it's just such an expectation given the incredible talent that they have, you, you know, and, and I'm not saying that Iran hasn't qualified in the past, but Oh, man, brutal. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.